Welcome to Federalism Review. Um, a couple of you reached out to me about the Federalism Quick Quiz, um, wanting uh, kind of a review of Federalism, and um, I am happy to oblige because it is never a bad idea to have more review. I have not figured out how to make Canvas show you the answers to your questions. I'm still working on that, uh, but I'll let you know when that does happen. So, we have federalism here. We have, um, I'm not going to review all of it, as the, video, the videos do that, but the important thing here, Tenth Amendment powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states or to the people. Now, this is the basis for reserved powers. Reserved powers belong to the states. Reserved powers uh, get you things like the National Guard, uh, get you things like uh, licenses, like marriage licenses or driver's licenses, um, things of that sort. All right, so reserved powers, again, are given to the states through the Tenth Amendment. National government, they have delegated or enumerated powers. You might see one word or the other. I'd remember national government, delegated, enumerated. Um, and these powers are only for the national government. The national government has the power to make war. The national government has the power to coin money. It was a disaster when we tried doing this under um, the Articles of Confederation, right? If we remember, you know, there was no national unity, no revenue through taxation. We couldn't repay our debts, all that. So, national government, they have delegated or enumerated powers. States have reserved powers. Now, powers they share are called concurrent powers. All right, but let's get into the quiz and we will look at some of these things. So question one, please identify the reserved powers from the list below. Admit new states? No, that's a power of the national government. Maintain the National Guard, as I said, that is a reserved power. Borrow money, well, because, uh, and I should explain a little more. The National Guard is not a part of the Army unless mobilized into federal service, and that's a whole long story. Uh, the National Guard of Illinois, uh, the commander in chief there is the governor. Uh, the governor can send um, the National Guard to Chicago to control riots, uh, to a town that maybe was hit by some flooding along the Mississippi, whatever um, he wants to do. Borrow money. Now, that is a concurrent power. The state can borrow money. The federal government can also borrow money. All right. So it is not a reserved power. That is wrong if you click that, because both can do it. And I'm just asking you to identify the reserved powers. All right, regulate interstate commerce. No, they can regulate the reserved powers. The states can regulate intrastate commerce. Uh, they can't print and coin money, punish lawbreakers. Um, I don't necessarily agree that that's not a reserved power power. I think that's, we'll get more into that a little later, but they can also conduct elections. All right. States cannot declare war. Michigan cannot decide to go to war with Canada. So maintain the National Guard, conduct elections, regulate intrastate commerce. Those are the three reserve powers on this list. Federalism, a political system in which national and regional governments share powers and are considered independent equals. All right. 
Let me show you where that is. Right here. Slide two. Political system in which national and regional governments share powers and are considered independent equals. Identify the concurrent powers from the list below. Okay. Only the federal government can coin money. This is an enumerated or delegated, whichever way you like to say it, power. Both the state and the federal governments are responsible providing for the public safety. As I've said, maintaining the National Guard, that's the state's job. Borrowing money is a concurrent power. Maintaining an Air Force, well, no, that's really um, the federal government's job. Punishing lawbreakers, that is both the state and the federal government, both of their jobs. All right, concurrent powers are power shared by the state and federal government. And that is this. This is not an exhaustive list. Um, to find out more, you should, you know, I, I thought it maybe went without saying, but I'll say it. Read the textbook uh, and, you know, watch the videos, pay attention, take notes. Uh, but, yeah, this is not an exhaustive list by any means. So national government powers, concurrent powers, state government powers. Now, if I ask you on the test, say, for current powers, all right, taxing, borrowing money, chartering banks and corporations, yeah, that's good. Making treaties, that's not a concurrent power. Or if I ask you, conversely, for a power of the national government, you tell me the national government can tax. Okay, technically you're right, but I asked you for an enumerated power. So, it would be wrong. All right. Identify the following delegated powers. And a lot of this is right here. Again, this is not an exhaustive list by any means. If I wanted to do an exhaustive list, I mean, federalism would be the only thing we'd ever do. All right, admit new states. Negotiate treaties with foreign countries. States can't do that. Maintain an army, navy, air force. That falls under the make war category. Declare and engage in war. Make war. Regulate interstate commerce. Interstate and foreign commerce. Print and coin money. Print and coin money. There you go. So not an exhaustive list. Again, read, read the book, too. You know, a lot of you paid a lot of money for this book. Um, Then reserve powers, okay, powers of the state government, delegated powers of the federal government. So, I mean, what really tripped um, some of you up, and I, I mean the, the class grade, uh, and I'm just taking 1108 and 1109, was, was about a B. I, I, it was a B to a B plus, really. So I'm, I'm not inclined to really do anything about the scores. Um, I'll go through because I, I do typically get partial credit and uh, I will I will certainly give back points where that is due but um, I'm not inclined to throw out the quiz or do anything else like that I it, it it's just not warranted based on the scores that the vast majority and I mean I'm accepting maybe three or four people got. All right, so that's the quiz. That's a little review of federalism. I hope you understand that a little better. Now I want to talk about netiquette, all right, because um, I truthfully have been getting some nasty emails, not from a vast majority, just maybe from uh, a few students, uh, and I know we can be very brave behind a keyboard, all right? Um, and this is something I deal with every time I teach an online class. Bullying me, 
threatening me, general harassment, um, just being rude, I mean, will get you absolutely nowhere. I promise you that. Uh, so, you know, read emails over. If you wouldn't send it to your grandmother, how you've worded an email, if you wouldn't send that to your grandmother, don't send it to me. All right? Pretend I'm your grandma or pretend that uh, I'm your boss at work. All right? It's, it's just, there's no reason that we need to be nasty to each other. All right? So I'm just making a call for kindness. And that is it. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns about federalism, the quick quiz, again, there will be plenty of opportunities for points. Um, reach out. All right. Have a good week, guys.